Good afternoon and welcome to the December 30th Mini Confab. Glad to have you with us today. Uh, for those counting, this is week number 43 of uh, having meetings like this or going through this COVID exercise. So I uh, appreciate your diligence and patience as we go through this uh, interesting time. So uh, I'll share just a couple of things and then we'll come back for a full report at the end. Um, we have no cases for residents today, uh, very good news. Uh, we shut the COVID unit down on Monday and uh, have folks back in their living quarters and uh, glad to get through that episode. We have one new case to report today. That is a part-time staff member in the assisted living area. Um, we reported yesterday via uh, emails and notices that we had five cases yesterday and uh, into late Monday night. So uh, six cases for staff this week, none for residents. I um, want to remind you that call-in for today is 6304. Uh, I have a lot of things I'll cover, showing statistics, talking about some of our numbers here internally, and... Um, Rebroadcast schedule is channel 970. They'll be rebroadcasted on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You can see the times on the screen, different times of the day. And then also we will post this to the resident website. We'll go ahead and um, go to Catch Me at My Best. We have two different stories. Uh, the first is Corey Williams. Corey is in our dining department. There we go. And uh, catch me at my best. We have Corey Williams. Corey is a cook in dining. And uh, the story for Corey goes, Corey answered a request from a nurse who needed a courtesy cart. Uh, courtesy carts uh, are given and supported uh, for families that are uh, with their loved ones at end of life. Um, not having any management on site, uh, and without knowing really what was on a cart, Corey went out of his way to bake some pastries, put assorted beverages and other snacks together for the family. Instead of focusing on what he couldn't do, he did everything he could do. Later, a family member told staff managers of this kindness and having the courtesy cart delivered. This is exactly the kind of compassion, taking the time to listen and respond and going above and beyond what makes us proud to work at Westminster Canterbury. Congratulations, Corey. And the second recipient would be Michael Perkins. Michael works in environmental services in the evening. Michael said, uh, story on Michael is, uh, after moving in, Michael rang our bell to say that he was collecting the empty boxes and discovered an item that, during unpacking, had been missed. A unique and important piece with sentimental value. When I asked about the chain that it hangs from, Michael went through the discarded paper and returned the chain to uh, this family as well. Surely this qualifies Michael as a Catch Me At My Best award winner, and we agree. Congrats to Michael and Corey. Thank you for all you do for Westminster. Debbie, can you go backwards to the... Uh just want to share a couple of, uh, and thank you for uh, our door decorating contest winners. I just appreciate, uh, love Christmas, and love seeing decorations around. So best overall display, Joan and Bob Marshall. And uh, I'm not sure I've told you two congratulations on your marriage. Mary and Bright, Debbie Snido, which actually is not coming up on the screen for some reason. I'm sorry. The next one, I uh, got a couple more. Most Whimsical, Sue Gold, Blue Christmas, Ann Robinson. Probably harder to see there. You'll be able to see better on the resident website. Originality, Paul Perone. Holiday Spirit, Mary Frances Lemon. And A White Christmas from Sarah Cole. We thank you for brightening our holidays and making the place look better. And uh, really appreciate that. So thank you. I think for my portion uh, to start this off, I am finished. We'll ask Katrina to come up and talk a little bit more about activities. Katrina? Good afternoon. 
Decorations will be taken off of the Christmas tree on the bridge on Wednesday, January 6th at 10 a.m. If you have placed an ornament on the Christmas tree and you would like, like it back, go ahead and pick it up before January 6th. Any ornaments that are left on the tree will be packed up and, and stored away until next year. Bingo will resume on Saturday, January 9th at 7.15 p.m. in the Commons. There will be a limit of 10 people in the Commons for the month of January. Please practice social distancing and you must wear your mask. The movie series will offer the following movies at 7 p.m. in the Commons. The second showing of the Philadelphia Flower Show, that's on Monday, January 11th. A Dog's Journey on Monday, January 18th and Tuesday, January 19th. And Imitation of Life on Tuesday, January 26th and Wednesday, January 27th. Please join resident Pat Mendoza in the activities and programs room for an acrylic painting class on Wednesday, January 20th at 10 a.m. Your January newsletter will have January 13th, and that was made before we got the notice that we were going to have the vaccination uh, clinic that day. So again, the acrylic painting class has been changed to Wednesday, January 20th, and that will have the correct information in the weekly newsletter you get this weekend. Um, for any of these and all programs, please bring your own pen to sign up for these as there are no pens out at this time. For more detailed information and other programs, please see your weekly and monthly newsletters, CTV 970, or the resident website. Thank you and Happy New Year. Good afternoon. Um, our Wellness Resident of the Month is Sam Cardwell, so be sure to see um, his information on our display board in our well, uh, Templeton Wellness Center, and be sure and congratulate him when you see him. Um, this month, or Jan in January, we'll have Pool Volleyball the second and last Tuesday of the month, as we always do each month, so be sure and come to the pool and join the volleyball game. As you see the picture on the screen right now, that's just one of our last events we had for 2020 to show some of the fun that we did have. So just wanted to include that um, to kind of end the, the 2020 year before going to, into the new year. We also have um, massage. We have a Friday added to our massage schedule now starting in 2021. So massage will be on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and every other Tuesday. We also have a massage special, a 2021 New Year's massage special next Monday, January 4th with um, Samantha. So be sure and sign up for your massage for that special. In our wellness classes, we are up and running all of our wellness classes. Our numbers, we have um, nine participants as well as the instructor in class. So be sure and sign up for the classes that you're interested in coming to. With our pickleballs, um, it is starting up again um, this week. At the end of this week, it will actually be set up late Thursday evening through New Year's and through the weekend since we are not here on New Year's Day. Um, you'll be able to go in and play whenever you want to that day if you're interested in doing so. We also have some additions to the pickleball schedule, so if you'll notice that, we're not taking away anything, just adding some additions to that. Um, so that information is in your newsletter and also on the board in the room in the wellness studio where you're playing pickleball and up on the sign-up board as well. The Soulmates Walking Club um, is going to get started for 2021 on Monday with a Soulmates meeting on uh, Monday uh, morning here in the Commons. Um, so be sure and sign up for that meeting as well. We want to um, get some ideas and things started for our, for our Soulmates Walking Club for next year. And also our first walk 
is on in January has been changed. The date has been changed for the same reason that Karina, uh, Karina, Katrina had a change as well because the vaccination was on, is on January 13th. So that date has been changed to January 21st, and we will be walking at Peaksview Park um, on the January 21st. And it will be reflected in the newsletter that you're getting this week. We did get that change in there, and you will see those changes around as well. Um, next Monday, we want to start the new year off with some New Year's festivities in our classes. So if you have any New Year's attire that you'd like to wear to class um, to start the New Year's off, please do so on Monday, January 4th, throughout the day as you're coming into classes. And let's get the New Year started off right. Uh, also in um, January, we have a wellness lecture. Um, Ashley Jarrett with Senior Independence will pre be presenting um, As the World Turns, Dizziness and Vertigo. We also have partnered with the YMCA um, as we had um, in 2020. We will continue that in 2021 with the Live Strong program, which is a, um, a program for cancer survivors. And also we are partnering with them with the Rock Steady Boxing Parkinson's program. Um, so there's more information in your newsletters. Also, I have more information if you would like to get in touch with me for more information on that, or if you're interested in registering, you can contact me, extension 3416. So be sure to sign up for all of our programs at the Wellness Board located in the lobby, and see all of our information in the monthly and weekly newsletters, as well as channel 970 and in, on, on the residents' website. So Happy New Year to everyone. Good afternoon. I am Chaplain William Deal. I uh, shared a few weeks ago uh, about my niece, Alice. Uh, she was diagnosed with a Wilms tumor, uh, had that, the, her kidney and the tumor removed, went through radiation, has begun chemo. Uh, and I share this, one, as an update that she is doing very well, uh, all things considered. She's a trooper. Uh, and to thank you for your, your prayers. Uh, many of you uh, asked me how she was doing. You shared that you were praying, uh, and that means a lot. With that, and you'll see similar to this in your resident update that will come out soon, uh, Alice's mom, my sister-in-law, shared updates on Facebook uh, and on social media, and she had an outpouring of support. Uh, people who across the religious spectrums, uh, Christian, Jewish, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist, non-religious, offering their prayers, thoughts, good vibes, whatever, and she was so overwhelmed by uh, just how much uh, the collective prayers meant. So, with that in mind, community is important. Prayer is important. Being able to share what's going on in our lives is important. Uh, hopefully, uh, tomorrow, but if not by the beginning of next week, you will notice nine uh, trees uh, spread throughout our campus in, different, in each of the different neighborhoods, if you will. Uh, they are the, going to be the WC prayer trees. Uh, when Debbie was away at bl in Blowing Rock, North Carolina recently, she sent me a picture of the prayer tree uh, there in downtown Blowing Rock. Um, it was connected to uh, a little gift shop. The gift shop caught fire, but the, tr the tree and the prayers stayed. And it's become a sign of hope where thousands of people have shared their prayers, their concerns, uh, their dreams, their hopes, their uh, expressions of gratitude. Uh, and Debbie shared it with me and said, hey, I think this could be a great idea at Westminster Canterbury. Uh, we jumped at it. We bought trees, uh, and they're going to go up, and you will see the trees with a little sign that looks like this. Uh, I'll read that in just a second. And then these little tags uh, with pens. You can color on them, write them, uh, and then hang them by the little elastic uh, str uh, string on the uh, the tree branches. Uh, this is for residents, for staff. You can bring in prayers from your your friends, family, whatever that may be. When we're able to open up, we're going to encourage others uh, to do that. Um, and they will be up year round. I'm I'm calling them semi permanent. They will be here year round, but they can be moved if we have an event or a need for for moving it. Um, but the little sign that will be out front. 
uh, it says you're invited to bring your own prayer or prayers and the prayers of family and friends and write them on one of the provided tags to hang on the branches uh, of the WC prayer tree. This is an interfaith and ecumenical opportunity to offer prayers and petitions, expressions, or express gratitude and thanksgiving, share hopes and dreams. We trust that our prayers are heard by a loving God and that our prayers are multiplied in, through, and beyond this beloved community. Uh, like I said, residents and staff are invited to do this. A few reminders uh, about chapel activities. I know that we've heard um, <clears throat> from Denise and others uh, and Katrina that 10 people is the maximum. That is the same. The same is true uh, for the chapel. Be mindful of that. Uh, 10 people uh, for our various gatherings. Um, January 3rd, this Sunday, uh, we will not gather in person for worship. Uh, it will be broadcast on 970, the chapel worship service uh, from Westminster Canterbury at 11 a.m. and also 7 p.m. Uh, my daughters turn five years old on Sunday, so I will be at home with them uh, and not be here. So forgive me for not being with you, uh, but I don't think that I would be able to survive uh, if I did not spend that day with Dorothy and Adeline. Uh, if you have any, any feedback, any questions about things going on with the chapel, with pastoral care, with the services being aired on 970, please uh, see me, share them with me. I welcome any and all feedback. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Nice to be with you today. I appreciate uh, William's enthusiasm for my idea. Nothing like uh, coming back with something and having someone else implement it. But I hope you'll enjoy it as well. It was really a very um, positive thing and, and a very strong message I felt when I saw it. it. The tree in Blowing Rock is a public space and it's a living tree. It's an actual tree that is very quite, quite very large and uh, people had place their prayers on everything from park benches to the tree and, and, and children were getting up on their father's shoulders and putting their prayers up on the branches. So it's really, it really had an impact. So I, I thought of here, thought with all of our current conditions that it might be an opportunity for all of us as well to see this visual of, of prayer. So thank you, William. <clears throat> Excuse me. I wanted to share just a couple things with you today. We did have a meeting this morning of our Employee Education Committee, and uh, that group meets periodically as we have a need. Uh, we have uh, five residents who are participating in that, and we had three applications today to consider, and those applicants were from three different departments, so that was really nice. Uh, we have uh, awarded funds to these individuals. One works in dining services. Another works in healthcare and is a nurse. And the third person works in uh, building, buildings and grounds. So we were able to support these individuals with their goals for uh, furthering their education. And we awarded a total of $5,860 to support their educational expenses today. Uh, and just as, as a follow-up to that, I wanted to share uh, many of you are very generous donors to the various educational scholarships and funds that we ha make available to our employees. And as far as the donations received for this year, for the calendar year of 2020, you were very generous and contributed $41,672 across the full spectrum of all of those giving opportunities. So I just wanna say on behalf of all of our employees, thank you ever so much, you are very generous and uh, your dollars are being put to work. So thank you very, very much for that again. The other activity that we were conducting this fall uh, through the development office as part of the foundation's work is our uh, annual appeal for fellowship fund support. The fellowship fund, as you'll recall, is our way of supporting residents who may fall on hard times through no fault of their own. They may need help to pay their monthly bill. Um, and other expenses that they may have. So fellowship is there for them and is there for all of you. 
and it's how we support all of our residents and has been in place ever since the establishment of Westminster Canterbury. So through, again, through your generosity and that of other donors, this year our appeal and also our angel campaign, our, our tree downstairs with all the angels on it is also a representation of gifts made to the fellowship fund and as a combined total of the fellowship appeal and the angel tree, we, uh, you contributed $80,485. So that's a wonderful, wonderful blessing for fellowship, for the folks who need it in the future, and we thank you very much. You are wonderful, wonderful donors, and uh, we appreciate your support. Have a happy new year. Thank you, Debbie and team. I'm going to go through a couple of various uh, slides and just talk about some of the statistics locally. Uh, for those of you who may not have caught the start, again, there are zero cases with residents. We have one new case with a staff member today uh, that is in assisted living and that we uh, had closed our COVID unit on Monday. So uh, one of our first statistics or graphs that we're going to look at here talks about the Lynchburg and the Central Virginia District as of December 30th. And um, the total number of new cases in our health district is now over 11,000. This is 2,000 new cases since our last confab. In Lynchburg, the number is now over 4,000 and is up 626 cases since our last confab. So you can see the slope of the curve has increased about uh, the 1st of December, since the 1st of December, and uh, we need that slope to flatten out. Don't quote me on this, but I think earlier in looking at some of the numbers, our health district was over 1,000 for the entire year. I believe it was the 31st of July. So that was almost five months to have this area get 1,000 cases and uh, numbers for just the month of December alone, I think are gonna be over 4,000 cases just for the month in the health district. So uh, we know it's jumping and uh, very concerned. When we look at the next chart here, we have uh, Central Health District daily count in a 14 day average. So uh, this average has dropped actually from 163 average new cases per day two weeks ago, um, but is obviously still high at 146. Uh, so obviously we want to go down, uh, and it's going down a little bit, but it needs to really drop a lot more. And then our third and last chart here is the positivity rate. And uh, that is the amount of people that are testing positive when they get a COVID test. And this has increased slightly from two weeks ago, very high, deep in the red zone. Uh, this is the number that CMS watches. And uh, when we went above that 10% line, we were required to test our staff twice a week. Uh, below 10% was once a week. So we continue to test twice a week right now. Uh, so still concerning. And then have one more that just shows positivity rates for the week, uh, two weeks, in Amherst, Appomattox, Bedford, Campbell, and Lynchburg. And you can see you've got uh, all hovering 20%, 16%, 19%, 15%. And um, really, it's not safe to travel anywhere in our health district, and we urge you to be cautious. Uh, Campbell County leading the way at 21.1. We are thankful for the militia out there without masks, uh, keeping people uh, safe with guns, unsafe without masks. And uh, I apologize if people support that, but uh, just probably a good thing 250 years ago, probably not the best thing during a pandemic right now. And uh, those numbers are very high and concerning. Um, when we talk about positivity rates, this is interesting, and this was passed along. If we had the same positivity rates with our folks at Westminster Canterbury, we would have 150 people living here testing positive. Um, when we look at our whole, uh, that would be residents and staff here. 
uh, 150 people testing positive if we mirrored the same numbers as our health district around us. So again, uh, be cautious, no social, uh, good social distancing, wearing a mask uh, if you have to leave campus. So going through some more numbers, uh, we completed round 29 of testing on the 29th of December. Tomorrow we will have round 30 uh, of testing, December 31st. Um, we are actually, that is for staff, uh, twice this week. We are also testing today all residents that live in healthcare assisted living and memory support. Um, required to do that after having the cases of staff members identified. Uh, if you have not heard by now, I apologize, but January 13th will be our vaccination date where we will have Walgreens on campus here. Uh, to date in independent living, 253 people have said yes to getting uh, the vaccine. Eight have said no, and then we're still waiting on a couple more people. If you have not heard from us, we've tried to call everyone, have had sign-up sheets out and some notices in various places. Uh, please call Resident Life immediately and uh, let one of those folks in there know that uh, whether you would or would not like to have the vaccine. Um, when we talk about the vaccine, uh, there's a lot of unknowns. We are trying to vaccinate the entire campus and offer it to all of our staff as well as residents, uh, all levels of care. There are a number of other campuses, including most of the Westminster Canterbury's, that at this point, if they have had their vaccine in one round, uh, have only had the fortunate uh, opportunity to vaccinate their healthcare residents and their direct care staff givers, uh, staff uh, members. We have told Walgreens that we have approximately 900 to 1,000 people on this campus identifying all levels of care independent living cottages uh, and have shared that. And they, at this point, have indicated that they are planning to bring enough of the vaccine to help vaccine everyone. Uh, whether that changes, we need to and will be flexible and you'll be hearing from us how the process will work, where to show up, information about us providing EpiPens and a lot of other different things as we learn more, hear more back from them and get closer. Um, there's a lot of questions out about the vaccine. Uh, the resident website has a CBS video that talks about it. Um, others have passed on different articles and things to me. We've tried to have those out and about for you to make sure you educate yourself as best as you can. Um, we know that the vaccines don't offer perfect protection. Um, there's things that we don't know whether vaccinated people will spread the virus um, and that the vaccine is not our ticket back to 2019, but uh, we believe it's a step in the right direction for Westminster Canterbury, a uh, step moving forward for society as well. And, um, you know, some parts of life will be the same. Uh, obviously, we need a lot of people to have the vaccine, get through both doses. Um, but I invite people to please uh, continue reading more about it, not from Facebook, um, but from places like CDC and other resources. Um, we continue to work on trying to provide education to our staff in a number of different ways uh, to encourage them to get the vaccine. Uh, I think I've talked a couple of weeks ago that it is not mandated at this point in time for staff, but it is highly encouraged. I will be getting the vaccine, uh, whether I need to be first in line to be an example or I need to be the last one to get it, but I intend to get the vaccine and I hope uh, all of you will join me in doing so. I think it's very important. I can't say and know what CMS will do, uh, whether your vaccine card at some point may provide a ticket for you to be able to visit in healthcare, whether it's traveling, restaurants, whatever that may be. Uh, but obviously there's gonna come a time where there are vaccinated people, more studies on the protection it provides and hope there would be some benefit, obviously of getting rid of all this, but maybe even helping with uh, just uh, reuniting loved ones easier that are split between levels of care. So uh, we are hopeful for a lot of things around that vaccine and look forward to it. A couple of different stats. Uh, seven residents to date since the pandemic started have been infected with the COVID virus. 
uh, two of those in health care, two in assisted living, and three in memory support. Uh, five of those seven recovered and are back in their places. Uh, one that we reported in the fall did pass away from COVID, and then uh, there was one more that passed away, but not due to COVID. Uh, there was actually some heart issues and other challenges there. But um, anyway, our staff members to date, we have had 61 staff members test positive for COVID. 42 of those people have come through our testing protocol. So the others obviously had symptoms between testing and went out and got a test on their own to be confirmed positive. That's approaching 15% of our staff that have had the virus. Um, I know some of you get frustrated with some of our reports and announcements. We will continue sending when we know. Uh, we will try to identify uh, departments, uh, do not identify the people. Uh, some of you can connect dots if you don't see a person that you normally come across and can deduce that it may be a person, but we will not share. Um, I will share if it's me, but that is probably about the only staff member. And uh, to date, I have not had uh, the virus. So um, we'll continue trying to do the best we can to share what we have. We are now approaching, or actually have tipped over, about $850,000 on testing costs. We were fortunate to really be able to slow that down by utilizing a lab in Georgia, and we do our PCR molecular testing through a lab in Georgia, and twice a week we're sending down uh, freezer boxes via FedEx, uh, still utilizing Centra for those tests as well, and it really depends on what's going on in various situations. We continue to use uh, antigen testing in situations as well, uh, whether it's staff or residents at different times. Uh, we still have a number of Abbott cards, and then uh, I believe it's a Becton Dixon uh, antigen machine that you get a swab and takes about 15 minutes to get that reading back. So uh, continue a number of different ways that's helped actually slow down uh, that cost that was really running up uh, at, at a clip of almost $48,000 per week. One time uh, a week testing has slowed down, uh, but still rising. And... Uh, concerned and we'll continue testing uh, as we go along and share everything that comes up. Along with these positives, unfortunately, we are still closed to visitation per CMS regulations and healthcare assisted living memory support. Um, we'll let you know more when we're try, uh, able to reunite people and get those visits back. But it has been quite some time now because of all these uh, positives we've had both with residents and staff. Uh, a little bit of bad news to share uh, regarding some staff members. And uh, Alina Zablotska is our director of nursing. And uh, Alina, over the years, has uh, gone through education to become a nurse practitioner in the last year or two. And uh, she has decided that at the end of January, she will be going over to one of the Centra clinics to be a nurse practitioner. Alina's been with us for probably uh, 20 years, starting out as a nursing assistant, rising up to our director of nursing, and uh, has gone through a lot of education along the way, and uh, has done a lot of great things. We're going to miss her, and we have started the process to uh, rehire for that position and are actively recruiting across the country and locally. Also, uh, following that with staff, Connie Soa is in development with Debbie, and I'm guessing she's been here about three years, four years, sorry. And uh, if you haven't worked with Debbie through the development office, you've heard her beautiful voice uh, when she and I do duets up here uh, for uh, times when we have uh, our social hours. So, uh, and if it hasn't been singing with me, it's usually with Debbie, one of us. But uh, we will be missing Connie. Connie is going to be moving out to the northwest part of the country, I believe Washington, towards her family. And uh, we'll be here for over a month, but uh, we're working on hiring to uh, fill that void as well. So we wish the two of those good luck. A couple other things, uh, various things passing through the hallway today. I had someone asking about humankind and why the project wasn't done. Uh, fortunately, that's not my project. And um, I just report what I hear from them. I think the weather, uh, obviously us having a record year in rain this year was a big problem for them. If uh, I understand things correctly, the asphalt 
companies are shut down now because of uh, cold weather and will reopen when it warms up and go through their maintenance as they do each time this year. So I don't have a timeline for humankind, but obviously they need asphalt to open that road. So I would imagine we're a couple of months before uh, we see that project conclude. And when I hear more, I will let you know more. There will be no Kroger or Walmart pickup uh, Thursday or Friday. Uh, that will resume next week. We are planning to get the cafe reopened for sit down uh, Monday, January 4th. Um, you know, we had had that closed when we had some positives with residents and then just felt like as we were heading into Christmas, uh, we had an open Christmas day, but felt like uh, with a number of people traveling, we just wanted to try to keep people uh, a little further distant from each other and just stay safe during the holidays. So hopefully we will get that back open January 4th. You'll see more information on that for uh, dining in the cafe. Lastly, I want to apologize for the quarantine notice that came out the 24th of December. Uh, poor timing on my part. Um, just with numbers rising, um, I was uh, in and out of the office handling some things, and I apologize for the late notice. I know for those that were gone and may have saw on a cell phone or something a notice that you would have to come home and quarantine, uh, I apologize. And uh, there's no excuse for a late notice like that, and I'm sorry. Uh, it was out of an abundance of caution for you and for everyone around you. Um, we have tried to reach out to all those people who uh, would have been affected by that and have just said that um, we know that you could have a problem uh, if you were traveling and on an airplane or at an event in Northern Virginia with family or on Peakland, you know, two minutes away from here, depending if you were around. Uh, younger people who seem to carry the virus more or maybe have been with someone that was exposed to the virus uh, as always and what I just should have said the message is please um, out of the kindness compassion and caring for your neighbors and people around you that if you've been in an environment where you feel like you may have had uh, some potential for higher risk to self-quarantine, uh, staying out of common spaces, and just um, making sure you get through a number of days safely. And uh, again, I apologize for that. I was in contact with people emailing or calling Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, uh, and I'm glad to try to clarify that. And again, I apologize. That is completely my fault. Um, we'd like to wish everyone a happy new year. And uh, I am optimistic as we go into the next year with a vaccine on the way that it is not the end all be all, but it is a positive step that we've been waiting for. And uh, hope again that a lot of you will be able to join me in getting the vaccination. There's a lot of hope and it's gonna take some time and patience. Uh, you have all been great um, staying safe and uh, looking out for your neighbors and I appreciate that. And um, Hopeful that, uh, you know, middle of the year we start getting back to some more normal things and larger group gatherings and uh, being together a lot easier and safer ways. So I will ask Chaplain William to come up and finish with a prayer. And uh, again, I wish you all a happy new year and thank you for all you've done in the last year, just helping Westminster be a safer place, helping our residents in a number of different ways. You all have been great and thank you. This, uh, the vaccine is giving me hope. Uh, there's light at the end of the tunnel. I said to a group yesterday, I just hope that the train starts moving a little faster. Uh, but the vaccine is giving me hope. So I encourage uh, all of our staff and residents to, to join with the rest of us in, in, in getting it. And so that's what this, uh, this prayer is about as we end this year and enter into a new year. Entering into a new year brings hope. Entering into a new year with a vaccine 13 days uh, into the new year is even more hopeful. So uh, pray with me. Merciful God, hear our prayers for a world that continues to grapple with a relentless virus and our prayers of gratitude for the light beginning to emerge at the end of a long and deadly tunnel. As vaccines are at last becoming available for COVID-19, and as people begin to be inoculated around the globe, we give thanks for all whose tireless labors have brought us to this day. Technicians, scientists, medical personnel, biotech companies, and government agencies, 
that have worked together to find a cure that will restore our communities to wholeness and health. We pray that the reach of these vaccines will encompass the world, especially those places where medical resources have far too often been inadequate to the need. Places where under-resourced medical systems are overwhelmed by the essential work of caring for those who have been infected. We continue to pray for healthcare workers around the globe who are running ragged after months of high-risk, essential work on the front lines of this pandemic. Grant them strength, endurance, wisdom, and courage for the living of these days. We pray for all who are desperately ill, for those who grieve the loss of loved ones, and for those whose physical, mental, and economic well-being have been most severely impacted by the havoc wrought by the pandemic. Grant wisdom to all entrusted with civic leadership as they discern and negotiate just ways in which to aid those most afflicted. Move our hearts to put partisanship aside for the common good so that safeguards against the coronavirus will not be ignored and that our communities may be restored and revitalized. Let us live in the spirit of Christ in love and grace and mercy for one another and for our world. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Amen.